everybody, welcome back around to the Blog Gang Grill. I'm your host, Doug, here with your video blog for October 15th, 2013. We're getting in the middle of October. That means baseball playoffs are in full swing. College football starting to heat up as we move closer to the first BCS rankings. And also the NFL's heating up as we head to Week 7 this week in the National Football League. But first off, I want to start off with our college football Saturday. Talk about first two upsets. We saw the first upset. We saw this between Georgia and Missouri. Georgia falling now to 4-2, and 3-1 and one in the SEC. Missouri with a big win behind, backup, behind a backup quarterback after James Franklin went down with an injury. And Missouri was just all over Georgia at home, 41-26. Missouri starting to learn how to be able to spread the ball around within the SEC like they did when they were in the Big 12, and now they're trying, starting to figure it out in the SEC. And the other big upset we saw was Stanford. Number five, going down to Utah. And Utah just showed some great defense. They really put a lot of pressure on the receivers and on the quarterback at Stanford and just made enough plays to get by them 27-21 to 21 with a late game stand by Utah. Other big stories. Oh, man, I was getting excited. I thought Clemson was going to get beat. Clemson, the team that I have had little faith in, they almost fall to BC. BC does have a very good quarterback, um, a, an almost dominant quarterback in Reddick, and he played well. Taj Boyd played well late, but really they didn't they didn't move the ball great. They turned it over twice on two fumbles. Um, they're gonna have to play better, and they got their big game coming up this week against Florida State, and what could decide who represents the ACC in the BCS. So Clemson almost got beat. I still think they're very vulnerable. But two teams that didn't get beat, two big wins. Texas, probably saving Mac Brown's job. Texas moves to 3-0 and in the Big 12 with a big win over Oklahoma, 36-20. to That's the first win in four years. And the Red River, Red River rivalry and, and Washington falling to Oregon. Oregon and Marcus Mariota taking care of business and dominating the Huskies behind Marcus Mariota, 30-45-24. to 24. Mariota had a very solid game, 24-31, 366, three touchdowns. He also ran for 88 yards and a score and jumped onto my Heisman shortlist as he jumped up into my top three. I'll give you the rest of that later, but now it's time. I picked all three. I was 3-0 in my picks. My picks were... Oregon over Washington, LSU over Florida, and my upset I picked Wash Wisconsin over Northwestern. My top five pretty much stays the same. Alabama, Oregon, Ohio State, top three all the same. Clemson moves from five to four, and Florida State jumps up to number five, replacing Stanford. My Heisman race still had Manziel on top. He went down with an injury early in the first half of his game. Came back, rallied, got his team a big one over a good old Miss team. Um, my number two guy, Jameis Winston, could prove himself, could jump to that number one spot with a monster performance this weekend against Clemson. And Marcus Mariota, the guy that nobody's really talking about out west, um, just getting it done, playing solid, and really showing what he can do with the team that he's given and how good he is. And people don't really know a whole lot about him. He's a sophomore, too, so that's very impressive. All right, so that's all I got for college football for today. Might do a little college football tomorrow. Blog week will be short just today and tomorrow. Heading off to a little vacation, so I will not be around. Time for one of my favorite segments of the entire week as we go around the shield. And we'll start around the shield with last night's game, San Diego 19-9. to over the, over the Colts, Andrew Luck threw a late pick. And the Chargers win the Sunday night game. Tony Romo getting it done again. Dallas over Washington, 31-16. Late touchdown pass from Brady to Tompkins gives New England the win over the Saints, 30-27. to Colin Kaepernick plays great and finds Vernon Davis for two touchdowns as the 49ers win, 32-20. to Denver doesn't cover the biggest point spread in NFL history. Still, they get it done 35-19 over the Jacksonville Jaguars. 
Seattle takes care of business against a decent Tennessee team. Marshawn Lynch has two touchdowns. Seattle wins 2013. An overtime field goal and 300 yards passing by Andy Dalton gives the Bengals a win over the Bills 27-24. Detroit beats Cleveland 31-17 behind three touchdown catches by their rookie tight end Fiore. Kansas City moving to 6 and 0 with a big win over Oakland 24 to 7. Cam Newton probably has one of his best days passing in his career as he beats Minnesota 35 to 10. Pittsburgh picks up their first win of the year 19 to 6 over the Jets. Philadelphia continues to make moves. Nick Foles has a big game as the Eagles win 31 to 20. Green Bay over Baltimore, Andrew or Aaron Rodgers wasn't great. Eddie Lacy played big. Jordy Nelson caught a late touchdown pass, and Green Bay wins 19-17. Chicago takes care of business over the Giants on Thursday night, 27-21, and St. Louis all over Houston, 38-13. And I finished with that game because I want to talk about what happened in that game with Matt Schaub going down hurt, and he gets cheered for being hurt. And I want to say it's not a great thing to do. But it sends a message, and I'm not, I'm not totally against these fans for cheering. The guy wasn't, it's not like he was down forever. He did get up, they cheered, whatever. But I'm just saying, if you're a fan and you're going to cheer somebody getting hurt, you might as well just not show up. Don't spend the money on the tickets. you got to send a message to the owner that you want changes. The owner doesn't care if you just sit there and cheer for the injured guy. The owner, owner needs to see that you really don't want, don't like what's going on with the team. Don't buy the tickets, don't show up to the game, and don't cheer a guy getting hurt. All right, time for my fantasy awards, or my, my awards of the week. My fantasy player of the week is Vernon Davis, 38 fantasy points. Offensive player of the week is going to be LaShawn McCoy, 25 carries for 116 yards. He also had two catches for 55 yards for the Eagles. And my defensive player of the week is going to be DeAndre Levy, seven tackles and two picks for the Detroit Lions. And in my NFL picks, I was 2-1. and one. The pick that burned me was the Saints. Losing to the Patriots, I was 2-1 and one this week, and I'll pick another three-pack on Wednesday. So I'll do my three picks for college, three picks for NFL tomorrow. Should be good stuff. Now I want to talk playoffs with you. Uh, we'll talk NLCS first as the NLCS game. The four is getting ready to start up in uh, right about now, actually. We're going to have Lance Lynn against Ricky in Alaska it should be a great and exciting game for sure. NLCS right now, cards up two games to one, and they're not hitting the ball well. Um, we do see Hanley Ramirez is in the lineup once again for the Los Angeles Angels. We see Yasiel Puig. Andre Ethier is going to be in the lineup as well, so that's big. And I want to talk about Puig. Last night, Carlos Bell, he hits a, he hits a towering triple to right field flips his bat I have no problem with anything he did he flipped his bat didn't hit it out still ran the ball still ran the play out probably paused for about a second and a half everybody's making a big deal about that he ran it out he made it to third and then he cheered a little Beltron kind of freaks out and all I have to say to Beltron is what I say to everybody if you have a problem with something that somebody's doing stop them if you're sick of somebody hitting a home run off you don't let them hit the home run off you if you're sick of them celebrating catch the ball don't let it go out it bounced off the wall he should have caught the ball anyways and it's my, the same thing I say in football or basketball. If the team's running up the score, just stop them. If you don't want them to run up, just stop them. It's simple, for sure. So Puig, I have no problem with him. Baseball needs more of young players getting excited. And it's the playoffs. I mean, honestly, it's the playoffs, the biggest time of the year. And he should be showing up because he had a big hit and a big game to get his team back into the series and give them a shot to advance on to the World Series. In, the, in this game tonight, I think the Cardinals could struggle. Ricky Nolasco could get it going tonight. Um, Carl Crawford, I think, is going to be the big X factor for this team. He's got to set the table at the top of the lineup and get this team going offensively. So my pick tonight is going to be the Dodgers to tie it up at two for sure. All right, so now let's talk NLCS or ALCS. And the ALCS game three just finished up Boston beating Detroit 1-0. Of course, remember, game one, Detroit won 1-0. And then Sunday was the wild game. Uh, Red Sox rally from four down in the eighth. The David Ortiz home run that was almost caught by Torrey Hunter and then the Saltillo Macchio walk-off in the ninth. 
great series so far. Today, Verlander was outstanding. Eight innings, four hits, one walk, ten strikeouts through 120 pitches. Lackey was just better. Six and two-thirds, four hits, eight strikeouts. And the big hit was the Mike Napoli home run in the seventh inning off Verlander. And that's all it took. I mean, this, po this postseason, we've seen such close games. It's been all about pitching. And pretty much... Right now, the Red Sox are getting it done. They're pitching while they're riding that momentum from that big win in Game 4, or in Game 2. So we'll see what they do tomorrow as they will send... Let's see what we got. Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday, Game 4. They have not announced starters yet. They will, so that will be good once they do. All right, thanks for tuning in to the Blog and Grill. I'll be back tomorrow with more fun and fun so stay tuned right here always remember follow me on twitter yankee baller 415 check me out jbsmooth84.com thanks for tuning in to the blog and grill i will see you tomorrow